What's up, my friend? Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays. Today, I thought I would share something a little different with you in honor of NaNoWriMo, but also because I get a lot of writers asking me, Abby, what does your writing routine look like? And I've never made a video about it. So in this video, I'm going to take you through my writing routines and what they look like. I say routines because I actually have three, a morning writing routine, an afternoon writing routine, and a nighttime writing routine. Since I obviously can't write all day long, I have to choose a window of time that's going to work best for me. At first glance, it might look like I don't have a writing routine because I don't write every day, and certainly not at the same time every day, but if you look closely, there actually is a method to my madness. I like to schedule my writing time one day in advance. So I'll sit down at the end of the day and ask myself, when am I going to have the opportunity to write undisturbed tomorrow? I reflect upon my priorities, and if I'm working on a project that's time sensitive, that project will take priority in my day. This sounds bad, but I never consider writing a priority project. It's extremely important to me, obviously, but there has never been a serious consequence tomorrow if I don't write today. And that's how I determine what I work on first. I ask myself, will there be any consequences tomorrow if I don't get this thing done today? If I don't have a priority project, or if I'm just ahead of schedule on my projects that have deadlines, I will make time for writing in the morning. Obviously, I could just write for an hour or two on pretty much any given morning and then have a hard stop and go work on my other projects, but I don't like to have a predetermined cutoff time when it comes to writing. Because if I'm on a roll and I'm in that deep trance-like state, I don't want anything to disrupt me. Not to mention, I find it really hard to transition from my fictional world to the real world. So if I carve out time in the morning to write, I wanna make sure that I have the opportunity to write literally all morning undisturbed. On a writing morning, I'll be very intentional about what information I take in first thing. I usually wake up between 7 and 8 a.m., do some really quick skincare, and get moving with a little bit of qigong or stretching. Then I go downstairs for my first essential cup of tea and my non-negotiable quality time with my family. That usually lasts about an hour, then I get to work. If I'm writing, I will go straight to my computer and the first thing I do is turn on downtime, which is a feature in Mac that limits your use of applications. I obviously don't use it as downtime, I use it as writing time. So I'll set the limiter for something like 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and only allow Scrivener and Spotify to work during these hours. This is one of my secret weapons for staying focused. Sometimes I'll want to pop open the internet just for a second to look something up, but then my limiter will remind me that I'm not supposed to be using the internet. If I really need to look something up, I'll unlock the app for one minute and do my search lightning fast, then get back to writing. My other must-haves for writing are my noise-canceling headphones, my instrumental playlists, and of course, lots of tea. Around mid-morning, I'll usually pause to make myself something special, like a chai latte or a London fog. If I can avoid all distractions and get in the zone, I'll usually be able to write around 3,000 words. It really depends on the writing project and how much source material I prepared ahead of time. As I talked about in my recent video on writing faster, it really helps if I have source material, like entire conversations, written ahead of time so that I can just write the scene around it or embellish rough ideas and make them fit smoothly into my narrative. If I don't have time to write in the morning, I'll opt for the afternoon. Sometimes there are just too many other projects demanding my attention and I can't escape into a fictional world, however much I might want to. If that's the case, I'll plan my work for the day so that I can be finished with everything by 3 o'clock. That's when I shift from my productive boss lady mindset to my creative artist mindset. This shift isn't easy, so I have to take physical steps to redirect my focus. The first thing I do is get rid of my phone. 
For me, shifting to creativity is all about blocking out the real world and stepping into my fictional world. I find that movement also really helps me to break free from the work mode, so I'll take a little time to either do a refreshing yoga practice or dance to some of my favorite music. I also like to physically change my location, so if I've been working in my dining room, I'll move upstairs to my bedroom and vice versa. I really love being in my cozy writing nook because it's nice and quiet, plus I have my aesthetic board, my cute little plants, my oil diffuser. It all sets a really lovely atmosphere for being creative. I can usually write about 2,000 to 3,000 words in four hours if I'm not interrupted. And again, I mitigate those interruptions by first letting everyone know that I'm writing and I need to be left alone, and then making sure I don't distract myself with the internet. Another thing that really helps me to stay in the zone is listening to ambient soundscapes. One of my favorite websites is ambientmixer.com, which has a huge catalog of soundscapes for every genre. I usually take a soundscape template and then make it my own by mixing in new sound effects and creating the perfect atmosphere to match the scene I'm working on. Paired with some instrumental music that matches the emotion of the scene I'm writing, it creates such an immersive writing experience. If I'm writing in the afternoon, I don't set a cutoff time. I just write until it's time to go make dinner or take my dog out for a walk. Unless I'm really in the zone, I typically don't write for more than four hours at a time. I find that's when my mental clarity starts to go, so I like to stop before I'm too burnt out. I'll be honest, some days I don't get to write in the morning or the afternoon. I'm just too busy working on other projects and the day slips away before I know it. But that doesn't mean I can't get any writing time in. Actually, sometimes I prefer to write at night. My work is over for the day and my mind is too exhausted to get distracted on business-related things. But sometimes creativity flourishes in fatigue. When I'm not 100% alert, my inner critic just kind of takes a back seat, and I can write without taking myself too seriously. Granted, sometimes I write way messier at night, but I try to listen to my creativity. A lot of times I get into a really creative headspace at night. The high energy of the day has mellowed down, and the world is quiet. There are no distractions and no interruptions, especially after everyone else goes to bed. Sometimes I'll stay up till one or two o'clock in the morning writing, if I have the energy for it. I write in bed so that when I'm too tired to keep my eyes open a moment longer, I can just close the laptop and go to sleep. I certainly don't do this every night, only the nights when I feel like writing and my head is too full of ideas to go to sleep. I know I'll be lying awake thinking about my story anyway, so I figure it's smarter to just write while I feel inspired. Okay, boom, that's it. Those are my three go-to writing routines. And like I said before, I will alternate between these routines depending on what I have going on that day and also depending on how much energy and inspiration I have. I hope you enjoyed this peek into my daily writing life. If you did, hit that like button and also be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Also comment below and tell me what your writing routine looks like. I'd love to hear all about it. Until next week, my friend, happy writing and rock on.